And welcome back to Top Story, 736-0300, always the number to call. Welcome back, Jill. Thank you, Kelly. That's Thank right. You. We have with us this morning Rosemary Fornshell, who is the uh, Democratic candidate for State Representative District 24, Seat B. Good morning, Rosemary. Good, Good morning, morning, Rosemary. I appreciate, appreciate you being Jill here. Jill and Kelly. How are you? Today? I have to ask everyone, what inspired you to run for a political office? Well, I've been interested in politics since I was about 12. Really? And that was 1960. And So we can do the math here. <laughs> yes, 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 you can do the math. And I guess I was 11. And a half. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, Kennedy and Nixon were running. And my grandmother was a Nixon woman, and my mother was a Kennedy woman, and oh, they my. would fight it out, and I was totally taken. Um, and at school, I became the go-to person to, for the teacher. She figured out I was interested in politics and sent me down to downtown. And I got all the paperwork and the class. Uh, we, we had a little duel, you know, in class between uh, Kennedy and Nixon. So I've been interested in politics my whole life. I'm a little bit of a political junkie in that way. Um, but I never could see how you could do this until you, you know, didn't have a job. And I've had a job my whole life. So I retired two and a half years ago from CSI, where I finished as a full professor and department head in business and economics. And, um, and then there was a little vacuum there. And you know, nature abhors a vacuum. So I jumped in and decided it was time for, for me to put myself on the line and run for office. Was there something about the environment right now that said this is the time? Or what do you think's been going on with Idaho politics that you're like, you know what, this is the time for me to run? Well, certainly, I think when I look at the Iowa legislature, I think it's, um, you know, it's it's not only a conservative legislature; it's almost gone to the ultra conservative mm -hmm. end. And so, yes, I think it's time for balance in the Idaho legislature. And I thought, yeah, you know, I'm going to jump in there and um, uh, help provide some moderation of that that kind of ultra right pull. I don't think it's really very good for a legislature to be as lopsided as the Idaho legislature is. There's so few Democrats and um, or even moderates on the Republican side. So yes, I thought, you know, competition's good and why not get in there and um, see if uh, see if I can't uh, add to. And even so few women. I just have to uh, add that one. Yeah, yeah. a lot fewer women than yeah, men in Idaho. Exactly. In fact, it has a reputation of a good old boys club. Yeah. It really does. And if you look at it, it's somewhat deserved. And uh, so a little diversity in the mix would be great. Um, I think um, a full marketplace of ideas, you know, and in business you want competition in a marketplace of, of products and services. But in politics you want a marketplace of ideas. You want a full range of ideas. And if, so, if a whole legislative body all says yes to the same thing, almost without discussion, what kind of a legislative body is that? It's certainly not a vibrant uh, democracy, which we all want, uh, or at least we verbalize we want. So. Now, the um, with your background in education and the, and the three education propositions on the ballots, tell us your your feeling on those. Well, I am opposed to all three of those. One of the, the hallmarks of this campaign is local control, and that would include in um, the area of uh, economic development, but also in education. You know, education, even by constitution, is the sort of the government closest to home. So we don't need the Idaho legislature picking out a laptop for a child in Eden, Idaho. Um, we need the, board, the school board in Eden, Idaho to decide what kind of buildings to build, tools to buy, teachers to hire. That's their job. And I think it's been pulled away to um, a very strong, obviously, superintendent of schools, or uh, educational, what is Luna's title? Superintendent uh, of Public Instruction. Yeah, Public Instruction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that just kind of, he, uh, Mr. Luna seems to have uh, <clears throat> pulled that power to Boise. Uh, so I'm opposed to all three for, for various reasons. One of which is the first one, to undermine the teaching profession. Every other profession has its association, has its, um, uh, upholds its own profession, professional ethics, all of those things. And yet when teachers associate and uh, want a collective bargain or uh, promote their own profession, somehow that's 
that's out of line when every profession does this. And so I see that Prop 1 is undermining the teaching profession. I don't think that's a good idea. I think the power in a classroom is between teacher and student. And it's wonderful to have technology. I'm all for technology. We've been moving toward that for 30 years in education. But it is not it. The teacher, as far as I'm concerned, is where the attention needs to be paid and the, um, uh, you know, we don't want to have less teachers and more of this or that. We need to have that worked out by the profession who's whose job it is to teach children. Well, Seven three six zero three hundred is the number to call. Let's take a phone call. Top story, you're on the air with Rosemary Fornshell. Did you have a question, though? Did you have a question for Rosemary? Yeah, I just wanted to finish, Carol, and I'll go hang out. Well, we only have so much time, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just let me finish. I'm a good listener. I'm a good customer. I shop at the store. Okay, hurry up. Okay, <laughs> let's hurry up. for in some individuals in the uh, Idaho legislature. I don't want to give that a wrong impression about individuals, but if you look at the leadership, Moyle and um, uh, some of the leadership in the Republican club, uh, that's what I call it because it's really a club, um, <clears throat> they, they pull at legend. Look what happened with, uh, with Leon Smith and other moderates that, um, that have tried to run or have uh, actually um, tried to, to bring some moderate uh, bills before the legislature and, and they um, coalesce against, them, against moderation. So that's why I'm, I'm saying that they, um, they pull to the right to an extreme. Uh, we need individuals in the legislature who, and some of the ones you mentioned probably are good people and have done really good things there, but uh, there are some people there that that really operate with a club mentality, and they uh, they coalesce against uh, uh, moderates in the in the body or in the Republican Party who are running. Um, uh, so that's my that's what my answer would be. Um, I'm not dispar disparaging any individual particularly. Now, Rosemary, you're running against Steve Harkin. How would your positions on um, what you're you're doing doing or planning to do differ from Mr. Harkin's? What difference would you want to make in the legislature well, if you were elected? I think Stephen Harkin's, uh, you know, he's a good man in his own way, and uh, uh, he's a neighbor of mine as well. <laughs> so I know him on a little bit on a personal level in a, in a good way. Um, but I would tell you, local control, he doesn't seem to support local control. He doesn't seem to support our local URA, our Urban Renewal Agency. Um, he wants that power to be, to be really emanating out of Boise, out of the State House. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I oppose that. I also think um, he, he's, uh, some of his ideas, um, like not going after the internet sales tax, being so anti-tax that there's no consideration of building the revenue side of the budget. I think it's wonderful that they balance the budget every year and they have to constitutionally, and they, and they do that job. But to cut taxes and to cut teachers and education still not funded as it was in 2009, uh, what's wrong with looking at the revenue side? Uh, for five years, um, they've been looking at an internet sales tax and they just table it every year because it's a tax. That tax is owed anyway. All the rest of the states are starting to collect it. So we just put it in the back pocket because, well, we don't want to consider that. And so I do differ from Stephen Harkin. I also think he, he probably doesn't listen to Democrats and I think there's a good number of Democrats in this new district. We're now the Twin Falls district. We're not uh, totally um, rural 
Owyhee County that Steve and I, since we are neighbors, we were both in that district before. That's another one of my motivations is to get in here and support Twin Falls as a, a city, as a district. And I'm really very fond of, of this city. Yeah, we got another call. Tom Story, you're on the air with Rosemary Fornshell. I, you're demagoguing me, but <laughs> um, I'm not necessarily for more taxes. I'm for building the revenue to do the work of the state. And if something is, uh, you know, uh, due and should be collected, why would we not do that? It's it's kind of unfair to the local merchants not to collect internet internet sales tax. I've talked to some merchants, and they say, "Oh, people come and shop in my store, and they go home." and uh, order it online because they can save 6% right mm. off the top. So, uh, no, I don't think that means I'm pro-taxes. And unions are not a devil. Um, it's, the word union has been um, really uh, subverted. Um, but every profession has an association. It's the IEA, the Idaho Education Association. Just because they have the right by law to collective bargain, they become a big mean union. I don't. I don't buy that. I don't think most people buy that. I think that's just demagogy. Uh, Rosemary, speaking of tax, I know the personal property tax is probably going to be an issue this year in the legislature. How do you feel about that? Well, I. I think um, the personal property tax proposes proposes a conundrum, kind of, because uh, it does sound onerous and it doesn't seem to be an equitable tax. Like some people pay it, some people don't. Some people find it. Uh, uh, oppressive, but th there is a phase out that we're looking at, and um, that may be doable. But we have to find enough revenue to run the state, and some counties will be really affected if we get rid of the personal property tax. But I'm open to the idea of some kind of cap or a phase out. And I have one quick question that affects women. If if the trans uh, vaginal um, ultrasound bill comes up into play again this year, how are you going to vote on that? Absolutely not. Okay, great. I just wanted Keep to know for all the women out there. You know what I what I really don't get, Jill, is um, somehow women's reproductive health is the business of the legislature. I know. But men's reproductive health is not. I mean, what man has to check with a legislator to go get a vasectomy? What man has to go check to get a, a prescription for a Viagra? It became on the insurance bill immediately. No we're, question. We're out of time, Rosemary. Well, thank, thank you for you. being with us. Rosemary Fornshell, a Democratic candidate for District 24B State Representative. We'll have Steve Hartgen on this Friday right That's here right. on Top Story.